Hello everyone, welcome back. I honestly love Stable Diffusion and what it can do, but if you are like me, there is still a constant struggle to get the desired effect from your prompts, and then maybe, just maybe, the, the regional prompt extension can help you out just a little bit with this. So let's get started. Over here is the GitHub page for the regional prompter, and we need to have this installed in our Automatic 11.11. So in Automatic 11.11, go to Extensions, Click the Available tab, load from this URL, uncheck this installed, and search for Regional Prompter. This is the one you want that matches the GitHub page, which I'll provide in the link description. Go ahead, install that, and then apply and restart your UI. Once you have the extension installed, head over to Text to Image, and you shall see this expandable section here with regional prompter. There's a lot going on here, but it all is explained in the GitHub page. Uh, since the GitHub page is in Japanese, I would say right-click, translate to English, and that allows you to read through each of the uh, sections of this GitHub page. So, so what does it do? Right, It breaks the image into separate regions and then you can have a prompt target each one of those regions so in this example over here they've broken it down into three rows and the top row they're saying it's a girl with uh, green hair and twin tails then in the middle row it's a red blouse and at the bottom a blue skirt so that's really great and what i recommend you're doing is starting off with this divide ratio so over here they have 1,1 1, 1, and you can click this visualize and it shows you that it's uh, two, two columns which is zero region and one region and then this is the template you would use in your prompt in order to get that desired effect and that's because we picked columns, if we picked row and we tried to visualize, it would be region 0 is the first row and region 1 is the second row and then the template is add row. Now you don't have to use the add row or add column, you can use the break keyword if, if that's what you prefer. Um, so let's go and go through a few examples and show you what this is about. Alright, so if here at the top I wanted something like an erupting volcano on the left and great waterfalls on the right just so that I'm trying to tell Stable Diffusion where to position each one of my prompts. Uh, you can pick a checkpoint of your desired preference uh, you can say sampling steps 20 to 30 i've chosen the dpm plus plus 2m keras for the sampling method and in particular i want this a wide image so i've got this as 1024 width and 512 for the height cfg scale is 6.5 and i'm not going to enable the regional prompter for now uh, let's just see if it what it gives me so if we say generate You can see we we have waterfalls but they're in the middle and then the volcano is on the right so it's not it and that's not what stable diffusion is going to understand it's not going to understand where to position the elements in your picture it's just going to understand the basic uh, prompts it's going to understand a volcano and it's going to understand waterfalls so let's see how a regional prompter can help us fix this so what we can do is set it to columns with a region 0 and a region 1. And then what that means is you could do something like this. Instead of AND, you can do that. Just out of preference, I do like to use the, the break keyword. Uh, but both should work. So we can say 
erupting volcano, great waterfalls, uh, and then we have to enable the regional problem zone. So let's see what happens. And there we go. We have exactly what we were looking for, the volcano on the left and the great waterfalls on the right. Let's try a few more things. Let's say I want three columns. And first one is a blue ocean on the left, in the middle some mountains, and then on the right the volcano. So I'm moving the volcano to the right. So let's visualize what we need first. We need to make sure we have three regions visualized. So now we have region 0, 1, and 2. They, in a template they say you need two breaks or two add columns. If you look here, I've got two breaks and I could use add columns as well. So if we say generate. Okay, we do have the ocean on the left. We don't quite have there's some mountains in the middle, but the volcano is still on the right. But if you keep generating, it does come out very, very nicely. Okay, so there we go. Still open to some interpretation. Let's say we want to add some thunderstorms. So we could say we want rain and lightning at the top, blue ocean on the left, green mountains and a volcano. And so here you can see, if you visualize, this still says we have three regions and I have my, I have more breaks than what they recommend here in the templates so of the two. But what I'm really wanting to do is across the whole top, I want to have lightning, rain. And so they give this option to add lightning and rain to each one of the regions. And to do that, you have to click this use common prompt. So when you visualize that, it changes the template. You see you've got common prompt, which can be a break itself. So this could be break, break, break. That's what we've got here. We've got three breaks. And what, that's what we see as a user, but what Stable Diffusion sees is more like this. This gets added to each one of these like that uh, when it gets, when the request comes through to Stable Diffusion. Okay, so let's see what this does. Okay, we have clouds, we don't have the, the lightning, we have a little bit of rain, but you got to just keep, oh, sorry, mistake, we, we do have some lightning hitting the volcano directly. <laughs> there we go, that's a really nice picture. So that's great, let's, let's go through and say we want maybe the change of seasons. So in this situation I'm going to still use a common prompt so I want to have trees as my common prompt which gets applied to each one of the regions then I'll have winter snow river autumn leaves with a walkway and lastly summer grass with wild flowers so the same template can be used here and if we generate that So what we get we have winter on the left kind of autumn flowing through the middle with a walkway and summer and wildflowers on the right that's really great okay um let's say we want something like less on the outside and maybe we want to look at something on the inside so we can say let's do inside a restaurant with a bar on the left 
paywalls in the middle and windows on the right. If we generate that, it gives us what we want, and that's really fantastic. Um, mostly that's so we've done inside for a restaurant, let's try inside for a teenage bedroom. So it's the common prompt is the bedroom to give it some context. And we want a window with curtains on the left, computer desk chair in the middle, and a dresser and a bed. We have many more columns here, many more regions, so we just need to make sure we are breaking it up into four regions because there's four areas here so if we generate okay let's see what and there we have our window which is great with curtains we do have the computer desk we don't have a dresser but that's okay and then we have the bed with pillows all right, that's perfect. All right, let's say we want to try a few more. Uh, let's say we have a hallway and a castle, no windows, and this would be stained glass, red carpet, and paintings on the wall. Let's go back to three regions, generate. Okay, so not quite, but let's try see a few more. Okay, a bit better. Uh, it's struggling with the walls. But I think after a few generations, it does give you what you want. Okay. So you can play around with each one of those. So this is fine for outside, some rooms, but what about people? Let's say we want to take a person like this. We want a, a girl in a busy street. And oh, let's, we should give her brown hair. And a pink blouse and a blue dress. Now let's change the width and height. So let's make this by 12, by 7, 6, 8. And then you need to make sure that this height and this height here in the original prompt are match. So the height here is 7, 6, 8, and the width is by 12. And what we want is still three regions but because it's a picture of a person we want to change from columns to rows and we want to do that but for this particular example i'm going to get a reference image first and i'll, I'll show you why it just makes it easier to keep the pose the same as we're trying to change the style or colors of the person disable this for a moment click generate Okay, so that's a great image. So what we'll do for that as a reference image, drag this into control net, enable, choose pixel perfect, and we're gonna choose open pose so that the pose stays the same. Now if you're using a 1.5 model, you can leave it like this, but since I'm using a SDXL model, I need to go and choose something like this bottom one here, side thigh board open pose. Okay, and we can choose DW full. Right, let's just generate again, see if it keeps the pose we're looking for. Okay, 
Very good. So now, with control net dialed in, uh, you, I recommend go control net. It's more important when you're using open pose. So let's, let's have that as control net. It's more important. Now let's go and enable the readable prompter. And make sure we have this as rows. And it's showing us the template is add a common clause and then add two rows. So that means we need to have something like this. So we have our, our common clause and then our, because we have three regions, we're going to say brown hair in the first region, pink blouse, blue dress, and we need to click generate. Okay, very good. We have brown hair, pink blouse, and blue dress. Now this is where the power of this regional prompter comes in is now we can change things around. So let's say instead of brown hair, we want blonde hair and blue blouse with green dress. And it does exactly what we asked for. So that's really great. So if you're struggling with any of your pictures targeting particular regions, either in the top left corner and the bottom right corner, I recommend taking a look at this regional prompter and maybe it can help you out. So that's all for today and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to learn more about Stable Diffusion and Automatic 1111, check out the links below in the description. As always, please support this channel by subscribing and clicking on the like button below.